I want you to take a moment to imagine with me, if you will, that you've been working at something, spending years, years honing a craft and promoting that craft so that you can one day hopefully make a living at it on a website that offers you virtually no protection in the event that somebody steals your work. And I, I want you to imagine that you decide, well, if I watermark this, perhaps it will be harder for people to steal it. Now I want you to imagine that there's somebody there who starts telling you that you're making the wrong decision trying to protect your creation. Today we're going to talk about something like that. So if you follow me on Twitter, you probably saw the other day I got in a bit of a bit of a tiff, bit of a bit of a little bout of a unpleasantness with an artist who decided to make it their personal job to start telling other artists exactly how they should be doing their business on Twitter. You also may have noticed that I was very quick to point out a few uh, hypocritical things that they decided to do. You know, because that's, that's the kind of guy that I am. I mean, I'm a commentator. Pointing out hypocrisy is just one of my many talents. Now, this person is an artist and YouTuber who goes by the name Ethereum Apex. And uh, I just want to warn you right now, don't, don't go to them with any criticism. Do not do that. I mean, they're a pro. They're a pro and they will only listen to pros because that's a valid argument that stood the test of time. <laughs> that one's been proven to have worked. I mean, uh, just just go ask Butch Hartman. Just go see how well that one worked for him. I mean, nobody was able to knock that down. There were no videos that knocked down that hole. If you've never done it, you can't critique it. Fucking stay. So go ahead and critique away because all it does is make me stronger. If you guys think you're going to knock me down or make me fail, do you know, do, do you know who you're dealing with? But we're going to get into that a little bit later. First, we're going to start off with what the argument was about, which was, again, watermarking your stuff. Now, you may have seen on Twitter that there is virtually no protection if you post anything. Um, it can easily be sniped by anyone who wants to steal it and repost it wherever. For those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, I will ask you to go visit the whole Fuck Jerry incident that happened very recently, where a very popular Instagram page became popular by stealing memes. This is why you'll see things frequently watermarked or signed either in one spot or multiple spots, making it very apparent where the source came from to try to avoid people actually taking credit for their work and being able to profit off of their work. Now this individual, Ethereum Apex, they were making a very overt shot at people who signed things or watermarked them in ways that this person did not agree with on Twitter. And as I've just described, there is a reason why people do things like this. Ethereum seemed to be very aware of the reasons why. However, they stated that, well, pros think it's cringy and I don't like it and it alienates followers. Well, if Ethereum happens to be watching, I have two things I want to say. The first off is a bit of good news. Nobody's got a gun to your fucking head and is trying to make you do that. If you don't want to do it, you don't fucking have to. The second thing, Ethereum, if you are watching, you are not their fucking advisor. You are not... What the, are you trying to be like a fucking trying to win a fucking good citizen award? Like what the fuck is going on here? If you don't like the way they do business, you don't have to do business that way. And one of the beauties of it is that they can do business however they want to. And if it really is bad practice, it will simply drive more customers to you. That's the beauty of it. So okay, just shut the fuck up about that. But now we're gonna actually get into a few fucking arguments that you made. And I use that term very fucking loosely because they hardly qualify as anything that should be entertained as rational or even acceptable. Now, I have neither the time, patience, nor inclination to do a whole deep lure dive into everything that happened around this argument and where all of its roots come from. However, I'm going to give you the spark notes of exactly what I'm talking about. Now, the easiest point to start with would be this quote tweet right here and how they sort of take issue with spoken quote tweeting. And this person sort of points out that they're trying to get their followers to attack them, which I think is wildly interesting when you start looking at all the times they quote tweeted a lot of other people. I mean, don't get me wrong, I quote tweet people all the time, and you know what, if you want to quote tweet people to help keep context right there for everyone to see, as well as continue to make your points, you go for it, you feel free. But it kind of makes you look like a fucking sped when you decide to start bitching at somebody for quote tweeting you, and then quote tweeting everybody under the fucking sun who's involved. You look like a hypocritical retard, I'm not gonna lie to you. Now, another point that they liked to bring up was pros this and pros that. Well, uh, you may have seen me reply to Spoken for, with my response, which was simply this screenshot right here, which does hold true because for a great deal of the whole debacle, they did not define how they quantified a pro or who they were actually making any kind of reference to. So this argument does not mean anything. 
as far as saying the pros think it's cringy. What fucking pros? Let us fucking know. And granted, they did after a long, long, long time. However, the fact is they kept saying professionals this, professionals that, without actually citing any professionals that people could see the opinions of. That in and of itself is some of the worst fucking logic you can possibly do, because you have made an argument that is built on a position nobody can quantify and therefore cannot possibly be proven wrong. And because there is no ability to actually quantify this position, you cannot actually assert this as fact. That is why we need to have reference to what you quantify as professional from the get-go. This in and of itself is a style of equivocation because it allows you to continuously move the goalpost through unclear language so that you can change its meaning when you need to. You also see this come into effect in multiple other parts of the argument because they start committing more and more genetic fallacies where they say the pros think this, but you think this, but they're pros, therefore they are right. This is both an argument from authority as well as a genetic fallacy and also just proves that they are trying to talk out of their fucking ass and not actually back up the position they have asserted. You're not all here, are you? As far as I can tell, pretty much every argument that Ethereum has been making throughout this entire thing has just been completely fucking dumb. Like, they're built on such faulty logic in places of ignorance. And I, I find this especially strange when you actually look at the fact that Ethereum's had their work stolen before. You know, I think out of everybody they could understand why an artist might go to extreme lengths to protect their fucking work. But no, I guess I'd be asking a little too much. Anyway, that's just about going to do it for this video, guys. Discord will be in the description, as will both of my Twitter accounts. And the artists who created my character stills will be in the description as well, as well as the pinned comment. I would love to hear your thoughts on the situation, so feel free to leave that in the comments, and I will see you guys later.